Okay, the next step to glazing is going to be to brush three coats on the outside. So I need a couple things to make my life a little easier. I need a banding wheel. Make sure you cover it with a piece of paper towel so that it doesn't uh, get glaze on it. Uh, and then I need my bottle of glaze and I got a good quality brush. Uh, for something like this you want as big a brush as you can get. Uh, the smaller brush it seems to just kind of make it a little bit more patchy. Um, so I've got my bottle. I'm going to make sure to shake it up real good. I always keep my hand on the lid. If you go to the cabinet to find the glaze you need and it is not there, uh, you can pour, go find it at the tables, pour a little bit into your palette. Please make sure you don't pour glaze into the lids. It's one of those things that makes the lid hard to get back on. Next thing you know, somebody's got glaze spilled all over them. Uh, so use your palette if, uh, if you can't find the bottle in the cabinet uh, and don't pour glaze in the lids. Next thing I'm going to do is on the outside I'm going to apply three good thick coats. I'm going to make sure that I cross the coat. So if I put the first one on up and down, the next one I'll do sideways. I want to make sure that I let the coats dry in between. And I don't want to over brush. We're not going to try to smooth it out like we're uh, putting a, a silky paint job on it. Uh, a lot of the uh, big things will just kind of work themselves out in the kiln. So I'm going to try to get up right next to my line with my black there so I don't overlap and plenty of glaze on my brush try to get filled in those little areas there if I have a major drip or something like that. I can smooth that out a little bit, but I don't want to just kind of keep coming back and, and over brushing an area. That will make the glaze actually thinner, and I want three good thick coats. When I get down here to the dry foot, I want to be a little bit more careful, so I'm going to try to use just a little bit less glaze and try to go right up to the line. If it drips over the line, I can always come back and clean it off, but it just makes a little bit more work. I've got my first coat on there. I let it dry all the way. I just put a little patch on here so you can see the difference in color. You can see that this is very chalky uh, and uh, the little patch that I just put on you can see the difference in the color there. So uh, as I apply this second coat I'm going to make sure I go in a different direction than I did the first time. So the first time I went around this time I'm going to go straight up and down. So I'm going to start here at the bottom being real careful of my dry foot. Come up to the top and be real careful of my edge so I don't overlap with the next color. Again, don't overbrush. If you get a big drip you can take care of it, but avoid just continuously brushing it. You'll actually thin the glaze out and, and make it kind of patchy. If for some reason you don't get to finish a coat during class, this is what you want to do. So I'm going to just finish and get to a good stopping point right there along the edge. And you can see the difference in the color. So what I'm going to do is take my pencil and I'm going to make a mark right there. And I'm going to make a mark right here. Because once they dry, it'll be really hard to tell the difference. And I'm going to put an X and a 1. That way I know that I put one coat on there. Okay, That's what you'd want to do if you had to stop in the middle. Uh, otherwise, it's really difficult to tell how many coats you have on each section. 
and I know somebody will come up and ask me, Mr. Sawyer, how many coats are on this? And I will tell you that I do not know. It's up to you to keep track. And that pencil will burn right out of the kiln. I'm ready for my last coat. Again, I've let the uh, project dry in front of the fan and I'm going to apply my last coat. Um, I went uh, around, then I went up and down, now I'm going to go around again. If you really want to get crazy, you could go diagonally. But... Okay, so I'm done glazing. Now there's a few things I have to do in order to get my project put through the kiln. So uh, this part's real important. First off, I want to make sure that I don't have any glaze where I didn't intend it to be. So I've got a, a glob that dripped down under here, even though I was careful. So there's a couple different ways you can take care of that. Uh, a sponge and a little bit of water is great. And that'll take care of those spots. Uh, if it's a little bit thicker, like a big drip, if you just get it a little bit wet and come back and scrape the extra off with your knife, it does not make a nice noise, I promise you, but it's a good way to get that extra stuff off. Uh, sometimes the glaze will stain where you tried to wipe it off. I'm not real concerned about that. I just don't want any of the thick stuff in there. So you got to do a real good job cleaning off the dry foot. Make sure you don't have any glaze on the bottom of it. I don't want it sticking to my kiln. Uh, and then you'll bring this to me when it's completely dry. Do not bring me a soaking wet project and you'll bring me your glaze sheet. When I have your glaze sheet I see that it's filled out properly. They've got your project. It looks good. I will sign the bottom of your project and that way I know uh, it's ready to go in the kiln. Uh, other things we have to do to clean up. You always want to make sure that we get the lids correctly back on the bottle. If you put it on there and it's angled, I guarantee you it's not on there properly and you're going to cause somebody to have a bad day. So make sure that you put that on there nice and tight, put it back in the right spot. Other things we want to make sure to do is to clean out our brushes really well. You notice this brush here is kind of jacked up and that's because the person that put it away put it in a container facing down and that uh, brushes have a pretty short memory span. Uh, so if you leave them like this for a little while, they'll stay that way forever. Uh, so you want to be nice to your brushes. The nicer your brushes are, the, the better they'll uh, work for you on your project. Also make sure you put your banding wheel away and you should be good to go. Go team!